Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. All right, uh, apologies in advance. Uh, Something happened with the recording of the commentary for this episode. So this is a re-recording. So if there were any comments, I couldn't find any that I for sure would have read. On the original, uh, I'm sorry those got lost. But today we're bringing you an episode of Mystery is My Hobby, The Waiting Game. Mystery is my hobby. Today's story took place here in New York early last month. In a third-floor apartment located in the upper 80s, a young woman stood near a window, furtively peering down into the street. Anything? Yes. Peter just came into the building. Be up here in a minute. Okay, honey. Well, this is it. Remember now, stay in the kitchen. Make him come to you out there. I'm scared, I'm scared. What if Peter suspects? What if our plans don't work? What if they'll work? They can't help but work. Oh, Peggy, don't start crybabying now. Remember how much depends on this. Remember all our weeks of planning. All right, Jack. Just that now the time is here and I... I feel afraid. Forget it. We can't turn back now. If Peter found me here, it would be worse than if we didn't go through with it. Oh, you're right, Jack. You're always right. Uh-huh. There. Is that better? Chad. Chad. You, you always make things right. Everything's going to be all right from now on, honey. Everything's always going to be all right with us from now on. It will be, won't it, Chad? Mm-hmm. After this is over, it'll, it'll be all right. Tell me it will, Chad. Sure it will, Peggy. I've already told you. Now, go on. Get out to the kitchen. You should be here. Make him come to you in the kitchen. All right, Chad. I'll be behind the dining room door. I'll never know what hit him. Oh, don't worry about a thing. This where you want me? Uh-huh, yes. Uh, sit there. Oh, uh, pretend to be reading. Call to him when he comes in. Make him come to you. All right. Here he is now. Smile at him, honey. Make your voice sound natural. Is that you, Peter? I'm out here, out in the kitchen. Peter. Peter, what's wrong? You haven't said a word. Aren't you coming out and kiss me? What are you feeling there? Here. What you? Ah! That'll take care of him. Daddy. Get hold of yourself. Now, unplug that gas hose in the floor heater while I move this body. Go on. All right. There. That ought to do it. Peggy, close the door to the living room. All right. Okay. We'll go out through the kitchen and down the back way. Oh, wait. Let me look around now. Make sure everything's all right. Never forget the way she did look at me. Never. Look at me. You couldn't believe it. The way... Quit it. Quit it, I say. Think of the way he used to look at you before you met me. The way he used to knock you around. You're right, Kate. I... To die. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Now, let's see now. 
Book open on the table. Half filled glass of liquor. Good. Honey, it's a perfect setup. Perfect. Why, we haven't got a thing to worry about. Can't we go now, Chad? Why do we have to stay here any longer? Suppose Peter comes through. Sure, sure, honey, sure. We're leaving right now. Wait for me over there near the back door. What are you going to do? I'm going to turn on the gas. Go on now. All right, Chad. Here we go, Peggy. This is it. That does it. Come on, Peggy. Let's get out of here. Dive is this, Peggy. Eleven fifteen. Another three quarters of an hour, and we'll go back. Uh, dance? Rather not. <laughs> How about another drink? No, thank you. Oh, don't be a sap. Have a drink. You need I it. I don't want another drink, Chad. I've had enough. Ah, oh, cut the ad, Peggy. Waiter, waiter, two more bourbon. Come on, hurry them up. <laughs> Chad, twelve o'clock. Yeah, twelve o'clock, Peggy. Time to go. <laughs> Old Pete ought to be dead as a hairy by now. Dad, don't, don't talk about it. Why not? we got to talk about it sometime. Say, what's the matter with you, anyhow? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Dad, I wish we didn't have to go back. Yes. So do I. Dad, you're not really drunk. Of course I'm not drunk. I just wanted to attract attention. Now, listen. As soon as we find Peter, you scream. That'll bring some of your neighbors running. From then on, I'll take over. What are you going to do? Do? I'm going to show him how Peter was sitting at a kitchen table reading and having a drink when the telephone rang. He got up to answer it, tripped over the gas heater in the living room, hit his head when he fell and pulled out the rubber tube that feeds gas into the heater. Oh, Chad. You think they'll believe it? Of course they'll believe it. What's to stop them? It's perfect, honey. Perfect. Let's put on the final act and finish it up. Betty, Peggy, this is it. I'm all right. Shall we... we ride up in the elevator? It's only two flights. Sure we will. You always do, don't you? Sometimes I walk. Here we are. Tonight you're riding. It'll look more natural. Yeah, I'm scared. For God's sake, quit saying you're scared. I'm sick of hearing it. Here we are. Go ahead. Dad, there's a light under the door. Someone's in the apartment. Nonsense. You probably left the light oh, burning no, in the no, living room. No, 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 I didn't. I'm sure I didn't. What'd I do? Oh, what'll I say? Just that natural. Remember, you don't know anything. When they tell you about Peter, put on a net. Stop crying. Oh. Carry on. Right, I'll try. Now, come on. That's the stuff. Come on now. There's someone here. Good evening. Are you Mrs. Sanders? What? Yes, I am. Who are you? What are you doing in my apartment? Where's my husband? One question at a time, lady. I'm Inspector Noah Danton. This is Barton Drake. <gasps> the police? Police? What? What's wrong? What happened? Who are you, if I may ask? Well, I'm Chad Pennington, a friend of Mr. and Mrs. Standish here. Oh? We were supposed to meet Pete tonight at the Golden Glow nightclub. He didn't show up, so I brought Mrs. Standish home. I see. I'm afraid we have some bad news for you, Mrs. Standish. Uh, has something happened to Peter? Yes. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Standish. What? Peter's dead. I can't believe it. How did it happen? Gas fumes. He apparently tripped over the hose that connects the floor heater to the wall plug in the dining room, hit his head somewhere, knocked himself out, and inhaled enough of the escaping fumes to asphyxiate him. Peter can't be dead. He can't be... Steady, steady, Peggy. Are you sure that's what happened? How did you find out about it? 
Where's Peter now? He's still in the dining room. Would you like to have Inspector Danton explain what uh, probably happened? Why, yes. It seems incredible that such an accident could have occurred. Come this way, please. I can't look at it. No, I can't. I... You've got to. Come on. He's in here. Steady, Peggy, steady. Hold on to yourself. Inspector. This is terrible. When, when did you discover him? About an hour ago. A neighbor came to the door and knocked. No one answered, but since the neighbor had seen Standish coming up in the elevator, they knew that someone was home. What a pity. I suppose old Pete must have been sitting at the kitchen table reading and having a drink. Why do you say that, Pennington? Oh, Peter always had a drink before going to bed. It was a habit he had. Yes. He'd sit out in the kitchen for an hour or more, reading and drinking. Oh. Was it his habit to read a cookbook, Mrs. Standish? A cookbook? Yeah, the book we found on the table near the glass of liquor was a cookbook. Well, but that doesn't surprise me. Pete didn't care what he read. The book was lying there, and he probably opened it and just slipped the pages. I see. That probably accounts for the fact that he was sitting in the dark. In the dark? Yeah. When we arrived on the scene, there wasn't a light on in the place. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Peter wouldn't sit in the dark. Of course he wouldn't. Why, George, I, I know. He didn't want anyone to know he was home, so he switched off the light when he heard the knock. Yes, he knew you two were expecting him at the Golden Glow, and he didn't want anyone to suspect that he'd come home instead. Yeah, of course, that, that must have been it. it. It must have been. Sure. I told you somebody could answer all those questions for us, Bart. Mm -hmm. However... There's that business about the heater being on. Heater being on? The inspector was disturbed, Mrs. Standish, when the neighbor who came in told us that the button near the wall plug that turns on the gas was in a non-position. Yeah. You see, that means that the heater must have been lighted. Otherwise, of course, no gas would have escaped when Standish accidentally tripped over the tube and pulled it out. But why shouldn't the heat have been on? No reason, Pennington, except that this is an unusually warm evening for anyone to have a floor heater going. Well... <laughs> Peter was like that. He, he was always cold. Yes, I see. Always cold. Well, Inspector, I guess you'll have to turn in a report of accidental death. Of course. Accidental death. What a pity. Well, thanks for dropping in, boys. I suppose you run into cases like this frequently. Oh, all the time, Bob. Uh, wait a minute, Bart. I just thought of something. Yes, Inspector. What do you figure it was that Standish hit his head on when he fell? Why, well, Inspector, the heater, of course. Yeah, but if that happened, the heater would be behind him. And here's the guy turned around just as though he'd crawled up to the gas outlet and stuck his nose into it. Oh, yes, possibly you have something there, Inspector. That's nonsense. He could have fallen sidewise. Yes, Inspector, I think uh, what you say should be given some thought. For example, if Standish did stack his head against the heater... There'd be blood on it, wouldn't there? Yeah, no, that's the way I figure it. What is this? He could have hit his head against the floor. Well, if he'd hit his head on the floor, Pennington, the wound would be in the front of Standish's head and not on the back, wouldn't it? Not necessarily. Uh -huh. He probably fell backward. Oh, now he probably fell backward. That guy must have been a contortionist. Um, but... I guess we'd better switch that accidental report. What do you mean? I think the inspector means, Mrs. Standish, that he feels your husband didn't die accidentally. He was murdered. Murdered? No. Peter wasn't murdered. He couldn't have been. You mustn't think that. You must We not only think it, lady, we know it. I'm afraid the inspector's right, Mrs. Standish. But please don't alarm yourself. You're in no danger. Even though the murderer should return, Inspector Danton and I will be here to protect you both. <laughs> We have a couple of murderers in the next room, Inspector. Well, then, what are we waiting for, for crying out loud? We're waiting for one of them to break down and confess, Inspector. Confess? Are you kidding? No, no, not at all. It'll save us a good deal of trouble and the state a lot of money if either Mrs. Standish or Pennington confess, won't it? It sure will. It'll also save me a lot of headaches if you can tell me why either one of them will be sucker enough. Well, let me put it this way, Inspector. So far, we've succeeded in establishing the fact that Peter Standish 
was murdered. All right, then. Let me go in and arrest the guilty party. On what grounds? Huh? Have we any proof that Standish's wife and Pennington are guilty? No, no, we haven't. The best you could do is bring them down to headquarters and hold them on suspicion. My plan is much simpler. Plan? What plan? Sitting here and waiting. Huh? Letting them wonder what we're doing, how much we know, when we'll finally present them with the evidence that will prove them guilty. You think one of them will break, huh? I'm quite sure of it, Inspector. You see, those two are not unlike a lot of other people who think they're clever enough to commit a crime and fool the police. <laughs> We kind of made him look silly, didn't we, Bart? Yes, yes, we did, <laughs> Inspector. Pennington and Mrs. Standish, being novices of the art of crime, overlooked all the less obvious clues. But my guess is they were careful to provide alibis for what they thought would be the clues we'd check on first. Such as what? Well, they uh, probably made sure they were seen at the Golden Glow nightclub. And I imagine if we checked, we'd find that Standish had actually arranged to meet them there. So you figure we'd be wasting our time if we checked all those things, eh? Yes, definitely. Our two suspects are not hardened criminals, Inspector. They're just a couple of ordinary human beings. I don't think we'll have long to wait. Maybe not. But when medical examiner Ryan's report comes, mm -hmm. and when we hear from the fingerprint boys, I figure we ought to do something. Oh, we will, Inspector. We will. But in a psychological manner. Psychological manner. Yeah. We'll play what is known, Inspector, as... Uh, the waiting game. <laughs> Sounds like fun. I only hope it'll work. It'll work, Inspector. Don't worry. It will work. Yeah. Yes? How long have you been in there? Oh, I don't know. A couple of hours, I guess. Why don't they come off? Why don't they question us some more? Waiting's driving me crazy. Forget it, Peggy. I've told you a hundred times we haven't anything to worry about. Now, now relax. What are they doing? Why are they holding us here? Why not? Look, honey, those two are human beings just like you and me. Even if they are cops. They've got their reputations to think of. If they don't know what was our... Shut up. Don't you think they're listening? I did. Now, take it easy, honey. If they want to play a waiting game... We'll play it, too. Yeah. I suppose you're right. Sure, I'm right. They haven't got a thing on us. We're too smart for them, Peggy. Too smart. Look, Bart. It's four o'clock in the morning. Hmm. I'm getting tired. Well, Inspector, go over on the couch. Take a nap. Oh, I'm not that tired. I want to know what's going on, you know. But there's nothing going on at the moment, Inspector. Yeah, that's just the point. What if this psychological manner deal of yours doesn't pay off? It will pay off. Yeah? What if you were the murderer sitting there in the next room? Wonder what's going on in here. Yeah, but I'm not a murderer. Oh, Inspector. Huh? It'd be a big relief to me if you would take a nap. Yeah, but I just told you. We're going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't get any fun out of this business at all. That's what I like about you, Bart. <laughs> Sometimes you don't seem to know up from down. Wait a minute, Inspector. Huh? Listen. Hey, that sounds like maybe your plan is working, Bart. Yes, it does, Inspector. I don't think we'll have to wait much longer. As a matter of fact, I think you'd better put off that nap for another 15 minutes. <laughs> Fool. What if they heard you say that? I hope they did. I hope they did. I didn't know it was going to be like this. Oh. I hope they... Oh. Oh. I had to. Get hold of yourself. That's what they're waiting for. For one of us to break. Not knowing what they're doing. Perhaps they found some more evidence. There isn't any more evidence. That's what I keep telling you, Peggy. They haven't got a thing to go on. Not a thing. You've said that before. You said you'd taken care of everything, and then they found all those clues. So now it's my fault. It was you who wanted the murder, and now because I paid... It wasn't I. You found out about the insurance money. You made all the plans. You forced oh, me to... you little double-crossing cheat. It was you who first put the idea into my head. And now you're trying to sell me down the river. That's not true. I'm not... Oh, Ted. Let's not quarrel. Thank you. Quarrel. Let's not... Don't need a telephone. I'll answer 
I'll take that, Pennington. Thank you. Just sit down, Bob, and relax. Hello, Dick speaking. Oh, yes, Ryan. I see. He was, eh? No traces? Well, that's odd. His wife. I see. What about his wife? Who, who is it? What's he saying about me? Now, now, lady, what are you getting jumpy about? Nothing. I, I'm not jumpy. Why should I be jumpy? Maybe plenty of reasons. Maybe none. What's the story, Bart? This uh, mysterious, Inspector. Yeah? Mrs. Standish, are you quite sure you were at the Golden Glow tonight? Of course we're sure. We were both there. We can prove it. Do you hear me? We can prove it. How, Pennington? Because we were seen. I... I got drunk and made a lot of noise and people looked at us. Well, well, well. So you got drunk and made a lot of noise and people looked at you. Well, well, well. What do you mean? Well, well, well. Oh, what is this? What are you trying to do? Nothing, Bob. Nothing. What are you getting excited about? You're having a thing to worry about, remember? That's what we are. Fingerprint expert, Inspector. I'll answer. Hello, Dick speaking. Oh, yes, Max. What did you find? Is that so? On the swinging door between the uh, kitchen and the living room, eh? By Joe. Well, I can't believe it. Okay, thanks, Max. Pennington, hmm? were you here earlier in the evening? Yes, why? I came up to get Peggy. Whoops, wait a minute, Bob. You told us that you met her at the Golden Glow. I didn't. I said we all arranged to meet here. You'd uh, better check that with your notebook, Inspector. Yeah. Let me get up my little black book here. I don't care what your little black book says. I know what I said. Who got to the Golden Glow first, you or Mrs. Standish? She did. She was there when but I got... But you just said you called to Mrs. Standish here. I did. I, I... I mean, we left here together. Nope, my little black book says otherwise. I don't care, I tell you. Those fingerprints couldn't have been mine. They couldn't. What fingerprints, Pennington? The ones in the swinging door. Why couldn't they have been yours? Did you wipe yours I... off? <laughs> I mean, there weren't any to wipe off. Do you mean, Pennington, that you were here, but that you didn't go out into the kitchen? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Then how could you leave by the back way? The back? Who said we left by the back way? Peggy, she just told us. I didn't. I, I didn't say a thing. But you did leave by the back way, didn't you, Mrs. Stanley? Yes, but what difference does it make? Dad did... Shut up, Peggy. Don't answer them. Don't say a word. Was the swinging door to the kitchen open or closed, Pennington? When? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I didn't go out there, I tell you. Sure you did. You wiped off your fingerprints. You said so. You, you tricked me into saying that. It doesn't prove a thing. Let me see your handkerchief, Pennington. Why? If what you wiped for? off your fingerprints, there'll probably be a smudge on your handkerchief. Hand it over here. <laughs> Something wrong, lady? <laughs> What's the use? What's the use? Shut up, Peggy. <laughs> well, Pennington? I haven't got a handkerchief. Oh, you haven't? What if there are smudges on it? They could have gotten there some other way. We can check that easy enough. Let's see your handkerchief. I haven't got one, I tell you. Sorry, Pennington. You also left your fingerprints on the button of the gas heater. No, no, he didn't. He couldn't have. It was I. I... It was you who what, Mrs. Standish? It was her who turned on the gas, of course. He didn't. Don't let him trick you, Peggy. Keep quiet. No, that's how it was. Pennington slugged the guy and the babe turned on the gas. No, no, Who no. pulled the tube from the wall socket? And who swung Spanish's body around after he was knocked out? What did you hit him with, Pennington? It was a lead pipe. I found a pipe. You're a liar. It wasn't a pipe. Oh, so it wasn't a pipe. Then what was it, Pennington? None of your business. It wasn't anything. You haven't got a thing on me. Did you know that Spanish was dead before the gas reached his lungs? He wasn't. He was breathing. Who says so? I do. How do you know? Don't stop it. But I can't stand it anymore. We did it. We killed him. Shut up, you fool. No, no, I'm going to tell him. I've got Shut to. Up, I said, oh, we murdered him. We thought we could get away with it. Up, we wanted him to kill him. Dad said we wouldn't find out. He said he'd take care of everything. Shut he up. said Grab him. Grab him, Inspector. Grab him. Shut up. Until you two are killing days are over, son. Put down that gun. I'll kill everybody. Look out, son. He's got nothing to do. <laughs> I'll walk the rest of the way. Okay. They're tired. <sighs> Practically daylight. Say, Bud, I was wondering about those telephone calls. Uh, the one from Ryan and the one from Mac? Yeah. What did they find? That's much more than we already knew, Inspector. The autopsy showed that there was no trace of alcohol in Sandy's system. So he hadn't been sitting there drinking, eh? Okay. How about the fingerprints? No fingerprints at all, Inspector. 
Pennington must have worn gloves, a fact which he'd uh, probably forgotten. It seems to me like he forgot a lot of things. One of the main things he forgot, Inspector, was that he was new at the business of crime. He had the usual layman's lack of respect for the police, and we used it to advantage. You know, uh, when this story breaks in the newspapers, a lot of people might learn a lesson. Uh, I doubt it. Well, I guess that about winds up everything. Yes, yeah, guess it does, Inspector. Well, good night. Good night. Hey, Bart. Yes, Inspector. What are the folks who read this story going to think when they realize that you're not a cop either? I guess we'll have to tell them, Inspector, that mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. I enjoyed this one. Uh, if you're a fan of Columbo, no doubt you recognize the entire inverted mystery plot. This did it better even than some episodes of Boston Blackie, which I thought were pretty close to that sort of idea. This one does have, you know, so many of those things, such as the, uh, as the killer uh, trying to help the police in ways that uh, makes uh, Inspector Dan kind of suspicious. Although it does end up a bit melodramatic. And I do think with this length, uh, it is a bit of a challenge to get that same, you know, level of complexity and also the psychological battle between the detective and the killer. All right, well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Joe, Patreon supporter since April of 2019, currently supporting us at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Joe. And that will do it for now. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and we'll be back uh, next Thursday with another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.